Hello there. I am here with my latest painting, Buttercup, and I want to talk to you about some strategies and techniques that I used, and so does Mona apparently, um, with regard to how I built the color palette for this particular painting. So are you ready? Here we go. It never fails. As soon as I sit down to film something, I get an animal right in my lap. So I'm going to apologize in advance for Mona who is bumping the camera and uh, flaunting her tail here. Uh, but you are looking at Buttercup, which is my most recent painting. And like I mentioned, I wanna talk to you about the color palette in this piece. So this painting itself is predominantly complementary colors. Complementary colors are two colors that sit opposite each other on the color wheel. So they, they are directly across from each other on a traditional Roy G. Biv color wheel. So my complementary colors here would be the purple and the yellow. And I used those two colors side by side as well as mixing them or blending them together. Um, so there are two different things that happen. Come on, Mona, you're making this really hard. There are two different things that happen with complementary colors. So we know that when we put them side by side, they zing. They, um, there's an optical illusion that happens and it makes each of the individual colors, the complements, appear to be brighter than they actually are. We also know that when we mix complementary colors together, meaning that we blend them together, that they create a really beautiful gray. They're, they create a wonderful neutral color. Um, and I have used lots of physical blendings of the purple and the yellows in this painting. And I've also layered glazes. Do you just want camera time? Huh? Is that all that you want, little one? Ugh. Um, I also used glazes of the individual colors at varying tints and strengths and layered those glazes together. So what happens when you layer a glaze? Well, first of all, we know glazes are transparent, so we can see through them to the marks that are underneath. And what happens when we look through transparent glazes that have color to them? there is a visual mixing of the color that happens when those marks overlap or lay on top of each other. We see through the color in one instance. Um, here, let me come in closer and I can show you an actual example. So for instance, right here, this yellow is glazed over top of a purple, but in, in some areas, where the glaze is thicker, you get a really, uh, you get more of a yellow feel and where the glaze is, Mona, you're gonna knock the painting over. Where the, the glaze is thinner, you can actually see through it to the color that's underneath, okay? And because this is yellow over a sort of bluish purple, what we get is a gray because we're mixing these two complements. So we get a gray when that glaze sits over top of it. So that's what I mean about transparency. Here is another area where, and, and of course you're gonna get, oh, you're getting the cat as well as, as well as the phone's shadow. Um, but you get this purple line here, Mo, that's it, go, sp -sp -sp, go. You get the purple shadow here um, that has been drug over top of the yellow. And so here the purple feels a little bit more dominant. It's, it's more saturated and pigmented than the yellow underneath, but um, I can see in my eye, it may not be visible on the camera, but I can actually see where this becomes grayer than um, the raw purple or the, the plainer purple on its own. She is utterly absurd right now. 
So let's take a look at this at the color wheel. We see the yellow and the violet directly across from each other as complements. And I just told you that that was my intention when I started the painting, to use complements of yellow and violet. Now I have been using this color combination of the yellow and the violet for um, a number of pieces, most notably the foxes and the horse with the purple flowers, um, all completed in this last month. So that was my game plan. But what actually ended up happening was a really interesting um, segue or uh, variation of the yellow and purple. When I went in to make some, do some line work with one of my um, ink tense blocks, I accidentally grabbed a red violet instead of a violet and didn't realize it until I activated it. So the red violet I will move that oops, to the top, to the top here. So instead of making my line work with a violet color like I had intended, I did it with this red violet color. And um, in response to that, I really couldn't, this yellow, I, the yellow that I was using was fine, but it just didn't quite feel right. I reached for the green gold, which is the name of the, uh, golden paint tube color that I used. And I used a significant amount of the green gold with that red violet. And I had a beautiful sort of complementary color scheme happening based off of the yellow violet relationship. All I did was shift that um, sort of a half jump on the color wheel and I got this happening. Now I want to show you this other little graphic. Um, while this is a circular shape, it is not a traditional color wheel, but we know color wheels are made up of primaries. How about if I pull this one back? Color wheels are made up of primaries and all the individual steps between them, right? So this traditional color wheel has a primary of red, yellow, and blue. Those are our primary colors. And then all of the colors or steps in between each of the primaries is identified with their own wedge of pi on the wheel, okay? So what happens if we substitute our red, our yellow, our blue? What happens if we swap those out for another color in lieu of that red, yellow, and blue? And you'll see that that's what I did here, essentially, with this painting. So that cobalt violet, that, that's the name of the golden paint color that I chose. That cobalt violet acted as my red. That green gold acted as my yellow. And that light turquoise teal, actually I think it was light turquoise thalo, that acted as my green. These were the primary, or I, I guess not primary, these were the main colors that I used for the majority of that painting. Now keep in mind, I lay my palette out the same every time. So you know that huge, um, or not huge, you know how I use my um, palette and strategize and lay my paints out the same way every time. These are colors that I lay out every time, although green gold is new to my palette recently. Um, I'm laying these colors out at the same time, but I'm not necessarily using equal amounts of all of the colors that I lay out. In this instance, with this painting, Buttercup, the majority of the paints that I used or the majority of the mixtures or the marks that I laid down came from these three colors, the cobalt violet, the green gold, and that light turquoise teal. So here you have the painting itself with my little color wheel, my makeshift color wheel, and a few other color swatches in front of it. This is a notebook that I keep, um, that I track my different color formulas in, as well as my different um, theories or approaches to how I use color with each painting that I've signed. Um, it's a relatively new practice that I've begun as I try to understand 
better my own relationship with color choices, which for the most part are pretty intuitive. Um, but this is a perfect example of a concept that I've been wanting to try for quite some time with regards to swapping out what one might normally think of as a red, putting something else in there altogether. Um, for instance, putting a metallic, like a copper, could go in into your, um, a, a copper could be swapped out from your primary red and you could use that in lieu of your traditional red choice or whatever the red choice is that you usually use. I'm mentioning this because we all have our own individual color leanings. Different colors mean different things to us and they help us to feel very specific in certain ways. So just because a traditional color wheel is made up with red, yellow, and blue does not mean that you have to structure your own usage, your own color mixing with red, yellow, and blue and follow along with that actual color wheel or standardized color wheel. You can swap out your tubes of paint and create your own, I'm going to say root primaries. And by root primary, what I'm referring to is the cobalt violet, the green gold, and the turquoise, the, the light turquoise thalo. These are my primary color substitutions. I'm going to call them my root primaries. And you can see in this particular wheel that I created, I have my root primaries identified, and then I have a middle or in-between step also identified with respect to what that secondary color, meaning combination of both of these root primaries would look like, okay? So this is just, you know, a suggestion, a challenge for you to um, take a look at the colors that you love the most and mix it up. I've been thinking for a long time about substituting pink for red, for instance, and what that might look like in, in the overall scheme of an end painting. And that's something that I, I may choose to explore. And it's something that I'm encouraging you to do, okay? Break the rules, take risks, it's not brain surgery, it's only painting. Have fun with it.